The Shadow of Fu Manchu. Based on the stories by Sax Roma. Dealing tactics of Alfred Slade, crooked private detective, have brought him death at the hands of Fu Manchu in place of the thousand pounds he'd expected to receive from Nayland Smith. But Fu Manchu's murder agent has carelessly left a clue to the manner in which Slade had been killed, in the form of a curiously carved cane, the duplicate of Slade's own stick. He returns to the house to exchange sticks and is trapped by Smith and Dr. Petrie. We find them now comparing the two canes. Notice, Petrie, the duplicate resembles Slade's Australian stick in every respect save one. Where Slade's handle is the carved head of a snake, the hollowed-out duplicate contains a live snake. Great Scott, and I... I touched it. Either from pain, fear, or starvation, the thing became torpid. Otherwise, no power on earth could have saved you from the fate of Alfred Slade. But what sort of a reptile so deadly could... Very deadly one indeed, Petrie. That thing's an Australian death adder. Far more deadly and poisonous than the king cobra of India. I'm sure... I was apparently very close to her. Yes, to an extremely horrible death, old chap. Well, we'll take this venomous little agent of Fu Manchu's into the garden and kill it before it does any further damage. And our friend here who came after it? We'll turn him over to Weymouth at Scotland Yard. Come along, old man. We've finished here. Any news, Inspector Mackay? Nothing, Doctor. I'm sorry. It's been gone over 24 hours. No news of them at the yard, either. What could have happened? They stopped here last night about this time on their way to Radcliffe Highway. Mr. Smith told me they were following a clue supplied by the man Burke. Yes, yes, they were on their way to some den where they hoped to find Singapore Charlie. Oh, I should have gone with them. But a most urgent call from one of my patients prevented it. A good job you didn't go if anything has happened. However, I'm sure there's no cause for alarm. Mr. Smith realized what he was going into and would keep an eye out for trouble. But if Burke has led them into a trap... Well, I, I've waited as long as I can. I've simply got to have action of some sort. One can't just sit idly by, you know. I understand. We're doing all we can, naturally, to locate them. Some of the Scotland Yard men are dragging that section of the river. There's a launch patrolling the riverside from here to Tilbury. It seems that somebody should have turned up something. Very likely we'll know more presently, Doctor. Meantime, would you care to run out to the breakwater with me? There's a launch out there also. Oh, no, thanks. You chaps are doing all that can be done, but... Can you give me the address of the place Smith went to? No, I can't. But uh, Benson, you remember him. He was with us the night uh, Weymouth and Fu Manchu went into the river. Oh, yes, I remember. Well, well, what about him? Limehouse used to be his beat before he transferred to the river police. He knows it quite well. Smith talked to him before they left. I'll call him. I say, Benson, I'll come in here a moment. This chap's a good man, Doctor. I suggest, if you entertain the idea of going down there, you take him with you. Yes, Inspector. Uh, Benson, uh, you remember Dr. Petrie. 
Neil and Smith's associate. Oh, yes. Glad to see you again, Doctor. Uh, how are you, Benson? You talked with Mr. Smith last night before he and Burke went into Limehouse. Uh, do you know what place they went to? Yes. You remember Shen Yan's place? Well, further east of the causeway, there's a block of old wooden buildings. Between Gill and Coat Streets, eh? I remember the place. Is uh, Singapore Charlie in there now? Yeah, he was until Inspector Weymouth raided the place early this morning. Charlie got away and there was no sign of Mr. Smith or Burke the American who led him to the place. Has it been definitely established that they went there? Yes, it is. Two CID men were shadowing. They saw the pair go in and a signal had been arranged but was never given. At half past four, the place was raided but no trace of Mr. Smith or his companion was found. Were any arrests made? Oh, yes. But there was no evidence to hold them by. Every inch of the place was searched. It wasn't a thing. I know definitely, for some of us rivermen were in the raid. And is the place being watched now? I can answer that, Doctor. It's being watched both from the river and from the shore. But I'm afraid our men are not there. Inspector McCarry is right, sir. Mr. Smith and Burke are certainly not in that place. As a matter of fact, it's padlocked since the raid. Lord knows where they are, but they're not in there. But they must be somewhere. Uh, would you care to go with me, Benson, and show me the place? Well, gladly. That is, if Inspector McKay... I had suggested you go with Dr. Peter Benson, but uh, that's a dangerous section, and I... Well, I don't know about you, Doctor. But don't worry about me, McKay. I'm quite able to look after myself. I've simply got to do something, get into the search somehow. Right. Go along, Benson. And don't let Dr. Petrie out of your sight for a moment. And be careful, both of you. This is the place, Dr. Petrie. Not too much light from the street lamp there. The fog doesn't help. It's a black hole, isn't it? Is that the building? No, the next one. This is a deserted warehouse. We'll have to go up the alley a little way. Right. Um, you wait here, driver. If you hear a police whistle, follow us up the alley. Right, over there. Very well, Benson. Carry on. I don't know what you expect to find, Doctor. There won't be anyone around since the raid this morning. Well, I don't either, but... Well, we may stumble onto something. You said the place was being watched? Where would the men be? Well, they should be watching Shen Yan's. Very likely they're hidden out somewhere. Yeah, here we are. Shen Yan's. Uh, is there any way we can get to the back, the riverside? Not through here. We'll have to go back to that warehouse to get to the wharf behind these places. Well, suppose we try that. I don't know why, but I'd like to look at the back of the place. Right. We'll go back then. It's only a step. Yeah, bad spot, this, Doctor. Heaven only knows what goes on here most of the time. It's hard for the police to control. Ah, here we are. Uh, that gate. It opens on stone steps down to an arch, and then through a passage to the wharf in the rear. Oh. One can see the rear of the buildings from that wharf? Yes. We'll have a look if you say so. Oh, come on, then. <laughs> yeah. It's a wonder the authorities don't tear these old buildings down and erect decent ones. This is a, a warehouse, you say? It was, sir, at one time. Now, well, now you may find anything housed in it. Come what's that? There, yeah. right in front of us, that white shape. What? By Jove, it's a peacock. A white peacock. Catch it, Ben. Yes, yes. Yeah, got him, sir. A white peacock. What's a bird like this doing down here in one of the dirtiest spots in London? By Jove, yes. I wonder... Probably escaped from some collector's place on the riverside. One never knows, Benson. It may mean something vastly more important. We'll take it back to the taxi. Come on. God blimey, sir. What have you got there? Open the door, driver. Make sure the windows are up. Windows closed. She's all tight, sir. Ah, I'll put the bird in the car. See that it doesn't escape. Ah. Now, if you don't hear from us at the end of an hour, take the bird back to the River Police Station and tell Inspector Mackay to keep it for me. Right, oh, sir. <laughs> the first time I ever saw a peacock in Limehouse, sir. And I. I shouldn't imagine peacocks are very often found in this quarter, especially white ones. Have an idea, Benson. Let's go back to that warehouse. Right, sir. You know the riverside rather well, I take it. Do you know of any place such a bird might come from? I was about to say, Doctor, to my knowledge, there are no collectors or dealers in anything of the kind along this section of the Thames. Why, peacock? With what country or people, Benson, do you associate peacocks? Go back into your childhood picture books, pictures of Chinese gardens. Uh, Weren't they usually peacocks in those pictures? Why, Jove, I say you're right. Why, even the mandarins wore peacock feathers in their hats. Exactly, Benson. I think we've stumbled onto something. I'm wondering, though... Uh, what the devil is the significance of a white peacock? Uh, here we are, Doctor. The warehouse. Hmm. Dirty, broken windows. 
Or is that one above the arch open? Can you see? It's open, I'd say. At least there's no frame visible. Would you care to go inside the building with me? I have a feeling we're on the track of something. Right, Doctor. Anything you say. The only way in, though, is through this gate down the stairs, and then there's a door on the right under the arch. Uh, you're armed, of course. You have a flashlight? Right here. Good. I also have my revolver and a light. I think we'd better not separate once we're inside. Come along. Here's the door, Doctor. How are we going to get in? It's locked. Let's see if any of my skeleton keys will work. Why, Joe, it, it wasn't locked at all. Just stuck. I say that's odd. These old warehouses are all locked up tight. By Joe, Doctor, we have hit on something. Someone must have... Wait a minute. Did you hear anything? No. Listen. Nothing, sir. No. My imagination, probably. Only I thought... But uh, let's try the upper floors first, then the cellars. We take these stairs at the end of this corridor. Come on. What was it you thought you heard, Doctor? Oh, nothing, I suppose. Can't be sure, but it sounded like a soft tapping somewhere above. Well, here's the stairs. Wait. Look at this. The prints of bare feet in the dust. Not alone bare feet, Benson. Look here. By Jove, man, these stairs have been used just a short time ago. And by several persons. Shall we go on? Yes. It's just possible that some of Weymouth's men were in this morning during the raid next door. Oh, impossible, Doctor, but not very probable. Police officers are usually in the habit of wearing boots. Hmm. Those bare footprints. Here, yeah, look. Well, we'll take every room and have a look inside as we go. Come along. Well, there's nothing in here but rubbish. No prints in the dust of the floor. Benson, where? Benson! Where the deuce are you? Benson! Shadow of Fu Manchu. <laughs> 